Visa is known for its massive growth in the industry of financials and credit services and its global impact on the world and its future. From the latest financial results, first quarter of 2024, we can see a massive increase in revenue of almost 10%, net income increase of 17% and an increase of earnings per share of 20%. This is caused by a tremendous growth in the volume of payments, both in credit and debit. Here we can see the growth in both the US and international and this goes well above the double digit growth. This growth in financials is not just a one time thing for this year. Over the last decade, we can see that revenue has more than doubled and net income has more than tripled in that same time period. For dividend investors, the dividends paid out by a company are very important. The starting dividend yield is only 0.75%, which isn't impressive at all, right? I mean, some of us actually want to live off dividends and would have to invest millions into Visa in order to do so. Well, not quite, as the dividend growth of Visa is out of this world, being over 17.5%. Growing your dividend income at a very rapid rate. Imagine getting a 17.5% increase in salary just after one year. 10 years ago, Visa paid out 10 cents a share and now in 2023, it pays out more than 50 cents. You might wonder if this rate is sustainable for the future and we will look into that with one of the valuation models later on. Paying out dividends isn't the only way for a company to give shareholders a run for their money. Besides dividends, they can also choose to buy back shares. This causes the fact that your share in a company becomes greater and greater, making your ownership larger. Here we can see that Visa uses billions of dollars to buy back shares year after year. This decrease in amounts of shares causes it so less shares have to be divided by the market cap of Visa making the stock fly high, looking at the total price history. So, looking at all the latest financials, we can say that Visa is doing very well for themselves and returning billions of dollars to their shareholders. So knowing all this, let's valuate Visa and see what it's actually worth using these valuation methods. Please do me a favor and like and subscribe to the channel. This will help me out a lot. Thank you. So on to the first valuation model, the discounted cash flow model. This method predicts the future free cash flows and calculates the present value, giving us the stock price. By plugging in the historical free cash flow over the last decade, we can use this data to calculate the future free cash flow using a growth rate of 8%. This growth rate is estimated based on analysts' expectations, the performance of the industry, and my own research. For the terminal value, we made use of the discount rate of 9% and the perpetual growth rate of 4.5%, which is usually the rate the economy grows. But seeing how future-oriented Visa is, we make use of a premium. Now that we have the future free cash flows, we add them all together. By adding up the cash and cash equivalent and subtracting the total debt, we find the equity value. Dividing this by the total amount of shares outstanding, that gives us the price per share of $302 based on the DCF method. Not only do I want to know about the future of the cash flows, I want to know if the dividends paid are sustainable. We need to put the dividends per share next to the free cash flow per share and see how these two relate. Why? Because dividends are paid out of free cash flow. Combining the two, we can see that the free cash flow is well above the dividends per share, where the free cash flow is increasing more year by year than the dividends are. On top of this, we want to know how much of the free cash flow is being used to pay out dividends. We can see it's only between 10 and 25%. This is called the free cash flow payout ratio. This is a very low payout ratio, meaning that Visa has a lot more cash on hand that they can decide to use for other purposes, like reinvest into the business, pursue acquisitions or buy back shares. Next up is the dividend discount model. This model uses future dividend payments discounted back to its present value in order to determine the value of a company. We plug in the historical dividend payouts, giving us an average growth of 16.87%. Using a discount rate of 9% and a growth rate of 8.25%, 
which I think will be sustainable for the long term future, we can calculate the stock price, which will be $259.80. The third valuation model we will use is the multiples valuation model, which assumes that similar companies should be valued the same. Companies that are similar are American Express, Discover Financial Services, MasterCard and Automatic Data Processing. Plugging in their stock price and EPS gives us a PE ratio. We use the average and also the earnings per share of Visa in order to calculate the stock price, coming to $202.55. I don't just want to evaluate Visa using other companies, but also compare Visa to itself and its history. So let's take it a step further. I want to know how the PE ratio has been doing over the past decade. The thought behind the PE is as follows. The PE ratio tells an investor how much he's willing to pay for every dollar of earnings of the company. So with a PE ratio of 32.09 in 2023, an investor is willing to pay $32.09 for every dollar the company earns. So the lower the PE, the better. The last model I want to use is Graham's valuation, the mentor of the great oracle of Omaha, Warren Buffett. Graham calculates the stock's value by taking into account the EPS and current market condition and calculates the upper bound of the price range an investor should pay for a stock. Throughout the years, this model has been revised many times. In order to calculate the intrinsic value, we take the earnings per share forward-looking, multiply that by 7, times the projected growth rate, 15, which is based on analysts' expectations, and multiplying that with 4.4, the average yield of AAA bonds. Dividing this number by the current yield on AAA bonds, 4.81%, we come to an intrinsic value of just shy of $200, which to me is on the lower end as this model is very reliant on the yield on AAA bonds. When we would have evaluated Visa using this model, say in 2020, the yield would only be 1.4%. When we plug that into this formula, the value would change a lot, to $685. After having calculated the intrinsic value using numerous valuation models, we come to a stock price of $241. This is below the current market price of $278. But like I said, there are a few things that heavily influence the valuation of some methods like the current yield on AAA bonds in Graham's method and being too reliant on other companies in the multiples valuation model. I think that discounted cash flow and dividend discount valuation models are much more representative for Visa. When using this data, we see that the intrinsic value is just above the current stock price, but using a margin of safety, Suggested by the great Benjamin Graham, we can see that with a margin of 10%, our acceptable buying price is $252.80, which is below the current price. I for sure have Visa on my watch list, as my time span for investing includes multiple decades, but I'd rather wait for the stock to fall a bit before I swoop up some shares. So if you decide to buy in or not, before you do that, please do your own research, and let me know in the comments down below what you think of the stock. Is it a must have in a portfolio or would you rather go for a stock yielding a higher dividend than just 0.75%? If you made it this far into the video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.